ICCGC session on the role of board in overseeing cybersecurity, risk management, and implementation. The session is from 10 to 1. There are two sessions by Professor Raghunath and Corinne Bermax, who is from Cisco, Sydney. I will briefly introduce the speakers. Professor Raghunath is a chairperson of the Center for Corporate Governance and Citizenship. He specializes in strategic alliances and strategic leadership. Professor sits on various boards and is the ex officio member of the IIM Board of Governors and a registered consultant with the UNDP. Maureen Bormack is a cybersecurity specialist. Uh, she specializes in cybercrime legislation and data privacy. Is, she is the academic director of CyberSharp and most recently the head of Cisco Women in Cybersecurity. Corinne regularly speaks at conferences and has published several articles on cybersecurity. Professor Raghunath will speak on cyber attacks and the corporate duty of care and Corinne will speak on board's role in overseeing cybersecurity risk management and implementation. Over to you, Professor. Thank you, Madam Greta, for your very kind introduction and uh, welcome to all of you. Uh, I think some of you were with us in the first uh, workshop, which was on the same theme. Um, while this, this workshop is primarily focused on implementation. And uh, it's indeed our pleasure and privilege to welcome you all uh, to the second workshop. And we, we look forward to your active engagement because this is going, going to be based on a case discussion. And, and before we uh, enter into the, uh, the case discussion, um, I would like to say a few introductory uh, remarks uh, in this area. Are you able to uh, see my screen? Yes, Professor, we can see your screen. Oh, okay, thank you so much. So um, uh, just to jog our memory in terms of the first workshop, we began by saying that if we are looking at uh, board responsibility, which is one of the uh, primary areas of uh, work for board members in terms of what do they do as part of the board, uh, we said that we participate as board members in a validation mechanism. What do we do when we spend our time in boards? We are just checking out the value creation side of the activity of the corporate entity versus the value appropriation side, right? So when we look at uh, the executive management, we are looking at how are they creating wealth? We look at potential abuses. We look at uh, wealth distribution in terms of financial reporting and um, how are shareholders being taken care of? And we have a whole host of surveillance mechanisms to make that happen. And, and pretty much a board member as a part of the larger collective uh, effort is involved in a validation mechanism. Uh, Sandeep, you have to allow people who are coming in. See, I can see admits coming up, please. Sandeep. Sure. Sandeep, are, Sandeep, are you there? Yeah, again, there is an admit coming up. Can you admit, please? Done, done, boss. Now, so when we have this kind of an orientation, one of the things that happens when we are looking at cybersecurity is this whole concept of the corporate duty of care. And as uh, directors on boards, we, we in particular have a duty of care, not only to oversee the conduct of business, but also employ reasonable decisions that protect shareholders, that protect employees, that protect stakeholders, such as customers. So when we are saddled with this very onerous responsibility, we are in a situation where we are in this early days of development in terms of cybersecurity duty of care, and legal obligations are fast developing as more companies face cyber attacks and, and data breaches. And the obligations that we face as a board member is more about making sure that we implement data security systems 
uh, which are absolutely set forth in an ever expanding patch of state and international laws, regulation, enforcement actions, as well as in contractual commitments, and which are expressed or implied in terms of obligations to provide reasonable or appropriate security for corporate data. So our obligations, the nuances of it are expanding when we are looking at what do we do with the data that is made available. Of course, we can lobby governments to stop using cyber weapons, but any change in policy, as we all know, we are all captains of the industry. That is where we are when we are on boards. We, we know that it requires a concerted multi-industry effort, but it is likely to have a, a, a limited impact. So as a board member, as a collectivity in the board, we need to focus on the short-term mitigation of threats medium term objectives of government policy mandating the security of internet connected devices in much as the same way as the pandemic where the centers for disease control and prevention and the world health organization have to address uh, health threats so the vehicle we are going to use today is the vehicle of this very real case and which was i hope distributed to all of you over the weekend and you had a chance to read it and all of us know about ap molar mask right they actually account for 20 percent of the global container shipping business in the world and they they faced one of the worst cyber attacks in in the history of cyber attacks and why did that happen well, the board was focused on inflation, trade, energy price fluctuations, monetary policy, macroeconomic trends, strain markets, but you know, did not pay attention to the point that a cyber attack can be a far greater threat on its critical infrastructure than all these great potent variables that they were looking at. So let me share with you a, a very short video where he makes his observations, his very deep observations about how he felt about this whole thing. I'll never forget it was the 27th of uh, June when I was uh, woken up at four o'clock in the morning. A call came from the office that we had suffered a, a cyber attack and uh, then a process started, which I'll talk a little bit about now. Before we go into the details of the attack itself, AP Miller Mask is the largest container shipping company in the world. We transport <laughs> roughly 20% of, of world trade in containers. So, so we're a very significant part of the infrastructure of making the world uh, actually run. And um, every 15 What minutes, happened? Uh, make full screen, Professor. Oh, make it full screen. OK. OK, I'll do that. Never forget it was the 27th of uh, June when I was uh, woken up at four o'clock in the morning. A call came from the office that we had suffered a, a cyber attack and uh, then a process started, which I'll talk a little bit about. Now, before we go into the details of the attack itself, AP Miller Mask is the largest container shipping company in the world. We transport roughly 20% of, of world trade in containers. So, so we're a very significant part of the infrastructure of making the world uh, actually run. And um, every 15 minutes, an average, a, a, a container ship will come to a port somewhere with uh, between 10 and 20,000 containers. Uh, so now you understand the criticality of infrastructure. We were hit by the uh, non-patch uh, um, uh, virus. Um, in fact, that meant that we were actually collateral damage of a uh, probably a state attack uh, situation. Uh, so, uh, and. Um, the impact of that was that we uh, basically found uh, that we had to uh, reinstall our inf an entire infrastructure. Um, we, had, uh, we had to install 4,000 new servers, uh, 45,000 new PCs, uh, 2,500 applications. And, and that was done in a heroic effort um, over 10 days. Normally, I come from the IT industry, you would say that's going to take six months. It took 10 days, heroic effort. And I, can only thank the employees and partners that we had on doing that. Now, 
Imagine a company where a ship with 10 to 20,000 containers enter a port every 15 minutes, and for 10 days you have no IT. Uh, it's almost impossible to even imagine. And we actually overcome that problem with uh, human resilience. People were able to overcome. We only had a 20% drop in uh, volumes, so we managed 80% of that volume manually, basically. And customers, by the way, were great uh, contributors to overcoming that. Mm -hmm. Maybe coming to the, to the learning, this was a very significant wake-up call for an organization like AP Miller Mask. Uh, we could say a very expensive one. It cost us uh, between 250,000, uh, sorry, 250 to 300 million dollars. Um, and yet I argue that it was a very important wake-up call. What did we learn? Number one, we were basically average when it comes to uh, cybersecurity, like many companies. And this was the wake-up call to become not just good, we actually have a plan to become come in a situation where our ability to manage cybersecurity becomes a competitive advantage. That's the ambition that we have. Number two, we chose a very open dialogue around this. From day one, we were on Twitter telling about what has happened, and we have spent enormous resource on helping other companies. I think that is an important point to make because with that openness, the experience we had, other companies can have, and I believe that we need a very significant level of um, increase in our understanding of this problem. It is time to stop being naive when it comes to cybersecurity. Um, I think many companies will be um, caught if they are naive. Even size doesn't help you. I think it is uh, very important that we are not just reactive but proactive, and I think we can't be average. We've got to be the best we can. Mm -hmm. The third and last uh, conclusion that I have is one around urgency. We are a quite technologically driven company. More than 90% of all orders come through the internet. But the next level of uh, dependency on digital will be everything is digital. Uh, all the documents are digital. Um, the boats will be autonomous. And hence the criticality of the infrastructure becomes even more um, urgent. And you cannot overcome with human resilience anymore. So with that in mind, um, the internet was invented, what, in, 18, in 1989? Not with the use that we have today in mind. There is a need for a radical improvement of infrastructure and understanding and a collaboration between companies, technology companies, and law enforcement. And hopefully, our incident can be a wake-up call, not just for our company, with big ambitions now, but for everyone that has anything to do with technology, which I presume is all companies in this world. Right. So, um, so that 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 was a a summary of what they faced and what the chairman thought about the attack. Um, I hope you have received the discussion questions in your mailbox. If you can check your email, um, you will find a list of discussion questions which have been sent. Shankari would have sent that to you. If you can just check your email, and what we will do is. Uh, we have these set of questions. We are going to have a breakout room facility now where uh, a group of three. Uh, Sandeep? Yes, Professor, it's ready. Yeah, a group of three uh, uh, can, can get into a breakout room, look at the questions, have one common laptop to share for your responses. And if you can work on that for the next 20 minutes, because you have four questions, and uh, and then we'll rejoin in the main discussion area and we will begin our discussion okay any questions no questions okay so sandeep can you enable the breakout rooms for 20 minutes okay boss right so <laughs> anybody wants to lead the discussion any group Ah, we have we have a wonderful team, eh, Mr. Pravin Rao, CEO. Right. And the CEO of uh, Infosys with us. We should right. be given a chance first. <laughs> please do. Please do. Yeah, yeah. Please go ahead. Yeah, please go ahead. Yes. Uh, hi, Professor. Uh, this is Pravin here. Uh, so right. we briefly discussed the case study in our work group. 
Right. Uh, yeah. In in fact, I was in some other work group and I got moved to the other one. So, but anyway. Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, so I think we we looked at uh, the case study. I mean, one is obviously we have to keep in mind this happened in 2017, early days uh, uh, when the awareness of uh, cyber was not at the height that uh, we are seeing today. Right. Uh, so, uh, given that, I think the, from a reaction perspective, I think the fact that they were able to get uh, most of their operations running in 10, 15 days was really remarkable. Well, normally right. it's uh, I mean for, for the kind of disaster they had, it typically would take months for them to recover fully. So, right. pretty impressive. And they got lucky because one of their domain controllers in Ghana was off, uh, uh, offline or something, right? They got lucky. Otherwise, it would have been a huge uh, disaster for them. Yes. Uh, uh, so in general, uh, I, I think, uh, I mean, one is, of course, uh, you we need to make sure uh, that uh, uh, first is about the awareness. Everyone uh, in, in every corporate, everyone, uh, you need to increase the awareness because today there is a lot of phishing attacks and many things. So, so that's very important. It's it's not the responsibility of only the IT or the uh, CISO organization in the corporate. So everyone should be aware, and it has to be pe periodically reinforced. That is very critical. So different organizations have uh, different methods. So for instance, within Infosys, every six months, everyone is supposed to take a quiz uh, and uh, get certified at the end of it. This both on data privacy and cybersecurity. The idea is to make sure uh, people are aware of what the risks are. And uh, and it also helps you in, in, in a unintended, sometimes in an unintended consequence, some leakage or anything happens. Uh, you can explain to the client the governance steps we have taken to educate people and other thing, and they are probably much more forgiving eh? for any, un eh? sometimes unintentionally some mess messes happen and so on. So that, that's something uh, it's very important. Uh, second one is uh, obviously uh, you have to make sure that uh, uh, you, uh, you have a full clarity on uh, where all your assets are and you have to have a very good inventory. I mean, that's very important because uh, when uh, any such disaster happens, you, it's important for you to know where all your assets, what the vulnerabilities are and other things. Uh, and uh, uh, in from a co connectivity perspective as well, uh, you need to make sure that uh, uh, you don't uh, centralize fully. I mean, you are trying to segregate, uh, have multiple uh, segregations of your network uh, so that you don't have a single point of failure. So even if one part of our network gets attacked, then at least other part of our business is up and running and so on. That's important. Uh, uh, or even in the event of an attack, uh, you need to have a quick ability to isolate your networks kind of thing. Uh, so that's important. For instance, uh, in, in our context, uh, if you find one of our clients uh, uh, subject to an attack, the first thing we do is to remove that client network from our network uh, kind of thing. And again, the context varies from corporate to corporate, depending on what it is, but that's very important. You need to have the ability to isolate uh, not only some part of your network or from the vulnerable thing or uh, from uh, from plant or any third party thing. And in fact, the isolation by should be implemented by design itself. I mean, it should happen through the design stage itself. Uh, then, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, there are a lot of threat intelligence uh, agencies and other things. You need to be connected to the ecosystem because finally, end of the day, uh, I don't think uh, 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 cybers, uh, I mean, being uh, secure alone is not good enough. You need to make sure everyone else is secure as well uh, because uh, you, one never knows when someone will get hit with uh, this one. So you can't... Uh, you can't take comfort that my uh, someone else got it. I'm safe, kind of thing. Because tomorrow you could be the thing. So it's important to be part of a network, be part of the ecosystem, share your learning, share your findings. Whenever you have vulnerabilities or anything, share your learnings with others and so on. Subscribe to this threat intelligence agencies where you get constant uh, feedback. Uh, using that, you can update your systems and other things. And uh, in the event of attacks, uh, you need to talk to, uh, talk to the concerned people. They will provide you what are things you need to do in terms of patches and other things so that you can quickly secure your system as well. So that's important. So having a plan, uh, how do you respond to an incident? Because one is, of course, I mean, you have to have a lot of prevention in place. You have to educate people and all those things is fine. But in the unfortunate event, something happens, you need to have a good communication plan in place. Who are the stakeholders? How do you communicate? Whom do you talk to? How, how, how do you recover? All, all those things are uh, pretty important. So net-net, uh, 
I, I think, I mean, these are some of the steps we talked uh, in, in our group in the short period of time. And I, I mean, obviously the context varies from this one, but uh, three broad things we need to take care. I mean, one is, of course, educating people. Second one is designing and preventing, I mean, take, making sure that you do everything possible to prevent things from happening. But it's a reality one day or the other, you may get hit, then how do you respond to the incident? So these are three tracks and every corporate should be... Uh, should be uh, prepared for it. And one best practice I shared with my group is uh, in our board, uh, in the risk committee, they, they have formed a subcommittee to focus purely on cybersecurity. So every quarter they meet and they have also enlisted the support of uh, uh, an external consultant. Uh, there is a professor from uh, one of the Oxford, uh, I think Oxford University. So the CISO, uh, this professor, the chief risk officer, and a couple of members from the risk committee, they form this committee and uh, every quarter they go through what is, I mean, not only about what is happening internally within Infosys, but also sharing what has happened in the world, what are the best practices and so on. So that gives comfort to the board that uh, we are not only safe and secure, but we are also proactively looking at and we are aware of what's happening in the external ecosystem. Mm -hmm. I'll just pause here. I mean, I can go on and go on, but I'll pause Wonderful, here. wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. So uh, is there any other group who would like to share their response? Nobody? Mr. Kusuru Mistri, uh, were you part of a group? Mr. Pradeep Datta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we were part of a group, but uh, may I request our uh, team member, Mr. Parna, to uh, speak because he captured all the notes that we discussed. All right. So, right. Pradeep, Pradeep I, what I'll suggest is you speak, I'll just uh, display the pointers. I think that will be better. Okay. Okay. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just sharing the pointers. Okay. All please, right. uh, 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 will you please allow share, please? Yeah, Professor, I think I'm able to share now. Okay. Let me uh, also just. Can second. you see my screen, Pradeep? Yes, I can see your uh, screen. No yeah. problem. So please go ahead. So uh, the first, you know, first of all, uh, I think uh, Mr. Praveen. Uh, explain very well, you know, what the board should be uh, doing and all. We tried to just, you know, answer these questions, you know. So why was Marsk attacked? I, you know, we felt like uh, it was not specifically directed at Marsk, but Mark, Marsk had a global dependency on certain countries and companies. Uh, this was probably all uh, uh, Russia, Ukraine thing. And uh, then there was a company in uh, uh, Ukraine uh, that uh, had a Polish uh, a connection with a Polish analytical farm and they were providing some support to Marsk and so they got caught in this whole thing and you know it's uh, also great for those guys you know if they could uh, disrupt the global operations of a large uh, uh, logistics company so it was more geopolitical vulnerabilities in their systems and networks that uh, got them into trouble why was it successful uh, because you know uh, there were a lot of gaps in their uh, uh, in the servers, laptops, desktop, you know, it was not on, it was not patched properly. They didn't really have a, a good cybersecurity manage, management. We also found out that their system administrators, even though the leadership team said, go ahead and upgrade all these things, because there was no bonus associated with upgradation as opposed to keeping the thing running, uptime was the more, you know, uh, measurable thing. They didn't even follow up on those things. So they were vulnerable. Now, what can companies do to prevent these? Uh, clearly, uh, better cyber preparation, uh, up, you know, continuous upgrading of and patching of servers and endpoints. Uh, Marsk had a very good backup system, uh, but they also had a distributed domain controller uh, mechanism, and you know, they had 150 of them distributed throughout the world. But you know, they probably never thought if all 150 got attacked at the same time, what would happen? And that's exactly what happened here. So uh, a lot of uh, employee awareness and et cetera. And one of the things is, you know, continuous audits and, uh, and, and, and also taking some kind of a cyber insurance uh, going forward for these companies would be useful. Uh, in terms of their response to the attack, I think, you know, uh, and again, because it was 2017, I would say that, you know, they did wonderfully well. First of all, uh, uh, like even we heard the CEO speak at the WEF, 
um, high resolutions and high agility. They, they did not hide the fact. They immediately brought their customers into confidence and shared with them what was going on and how they planned to attack it. Uh, they did everything possible from a human, you know, they had to get back to pen and paper and human beings, you know, get the guy out of Ghana and see if he can take the domain controller by hand to London. Guy didn't have a visa. Okay, so give it to somebody in Nigeria and let him fly out. And in the process, you know, keep, keep replacing every server, every uh, laptop, every machine in the company, and don't worry about how much it costs. At that time, do not try to penny pinch because your, you, you know, your future is at stake. Your, your credibility to your customers is at stake. And I think you know, they, they did a fantastic mobilization of uh, resources, dollars, the leadership uh, uh, stood up and, and took the responsibility. And, and 10 days uh, for a company of that size and still maintaining their orders uh, uh, booking process uh, during that period, I think you know, it was fantastic. That's what the group thought. Wonderful, wonderful. So very aptly summarized. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Anybody else, any other group which needs to come in and add to whatever observations and comments that have been made so far? Good morning, Professor. This is Kushu Mystery from Eureka Falls. Hello, good morning, Mr. Kushu. Good morning. Yeah. I think uh, Gopal Krishnan Padmanabhan was in the group and I think we, uh, Gopal Krishnan, would you like to highlight what we spoke about? I'm not very sure if he's there. Uh, but I think we, we did discuss all the issues uh, on, and I think he had captured all the points on screen. Um, I hope he can speak. Okay. So I think, uh, Professor, the, the fact of the matter is that uh, um, why did they get attacked is, uh, it's a very, um, it's a, it's a very simple thing that uh, effectively, always the top line or the bottom line of the country, the company is taken. And when it comes to cybersecurity, nobody, you know, it's, uh, it's more of a step two mechanism. And usually it's, we will react when it happens. And I think that has proven itself to be a, um, a myth, and I think that myth has got busted in most of the organizations. And in fact, as we are talking about a, 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 a case study which happened, uh, which happened in 2017, as as late or early as yesterday, we understand that even a company like Kidzania, which deals with kids entertainment, has got attacked, uh, and a ransomware notice has come in. So I think the fact of the matter is why were they attacked? Of course, because of the Ukraine situation. But this, the, the weakest link in the chain was attacked. The weakest link, which is basically a tax filing software, which had nothing to do with their main business, was attacked and that's how, and naturally it was spread from there. So I think that it itself uh, indicates that uh, the problem was, um, not related to the company, not being able to look at it, but they did not look at every single nook and corner and that's how they got attacked. Uh, the other issues which basically comes to mind is that, uh, sorry, I do not have all the questions in front of me and I'm just trying to find that out uh, so I can respond to all of them. Um, but how does a company like Merst um, look at this situation and I think they looked at it very progressively. Uh, leadership was from the top, which was the most interesting thing. They were very, very open to how the attack happened, what was the impact. And I think the important point is they reached out. They were transparent. So, you know, when somebody asks for help, most of the companies jump into it and help. And I think that's more, what is more important. Um, why would a situation like this, how can it be curtailed? Uh, I think companies in India should recognize the fact that a cyber security risk. Uh, you, you are on mute, Mr. Mystery. I'm sorry, I got muted. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 
So a cyber security management response should be done. It's a document which has to be practiced. It cannot be sitting in a piece of paper. And uh, we also have a concept now called a war game. So once a year, we ask an ethical hacker to come into our office and hack the daylights out of us. So it shows us the vulnerabilities. It shows the management of vulnerabilities. And it's not just a vulnerability of the company. It's also the vulnerability of individuals. And I think if that is done consistently, uh, and I'm pretty sure that MERS has that now, uh, they would definitely be able to respond much better. So I don't think so cybersecurity is just a buzzword anymore. It's something which has to be practiced. It has to be inculcated into every individual and also the culture change will have to be done throughout a company to make sure it's done correctly. Thank you, thank you so very much, Mr. Mistry. thank you. Um, any others who have any other comments to add? No? Okay, so uh, you pretty much observed all the main contributing factors and, and you've been able to, given your experience and exposure, you've been able to summarize aptly what the case represented. Is my screen visible to you? Yes, it is. Yes, it yeah. is. Okay, thank you. So um, essentially what we find uh, in terms of, uh, are you able to see my screen? No, but no. You're we not able to for see a second, yeah. But oh, you can't see my screen? Let me try once again. Is that visible? Yes, now it is visible. Now it is visible. Okay. So, what we find here, if you look at the case and if you look at our own experiences in terms of how are we managing the cybersecurity threat and what is our risk mitigation strategy, essentially it falls into a maturity model. So, we have a basic organization a very progressive organization, if you have a very advanced organization. If you were to look at uh, AP Moller Marsk, where would they fall in this philosophy? I would say basic organization. That is cybersecurity is a necessary evil. Yes. The way at least the implementation has been done. The top, there was a gap between the top and what the implementation was. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, I'm Ravindran Professor from Sakti Finance. Yes. Uh, but the, for me, the cyber security is uh, one of the critical aspects of the business. So you would uh, say it must be integrated into the business into the business from board to down the level one operator. Right. Anybody else? Sir, Anil here. Uh, it, it's actually both basic organization and processing organization. Because uh, the management, although they have been informed, but they have not got a sufficient oversight to ensure that cybersecurity is actually being practiced. Although the administrators inform them that this is going to be a risk. So I think it is, it falls in both. So what you're saying is that there is an aspiration and there is a transition. Yes. And, yes. Uh, and they are in a transitional mode saying that we have to move from cybersecurity being a necessary evil to something that has to be integrated. To actually getting. Yeah, integrated. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Now, if you look at the people aspect of it, where are they? Uh, Professor Ravindran again. Yes. Uh, see, uh, this CISO and other uh, concepts are very applicable for bigger organizations, actually. Uh, okay. But uh, see, like uh, a medium sized company, normally, you know, the IT head, the CIO, he takes care of you know, all the hats. He has to wear all the hats and then take care of it. That's the reality, actually. That's fine. I'm asking about 
AP Molar Bursk, where are they? Okay. Dr. Datta, what do you think? I, I think uh, the, the case study tells me that they're probably a little bit in the middle category, the progressing organization. They're beyond basic, but they're definitely far away from advanced. Exactly. So if you look at the people aspects, if you look at the reporting systems, uh, they seem to be in the progressive side, but what an aspiration should be is that the CISO reports directly to the CEO, is active with the board. I mean, that's a very critical point. Is active with the board and there is well-organized staff with good work environment and all the skills and the staff problems and, and their upgradation is something that has to be addressed because there is a shortage of skills, as you see, um, in the industry per se. If we look at the process part of it, where would we pay, place AP Molar Busk? Professor, I still believe there will be a progressing organization. Okay. Professor, I, my thought is they should be in advanced organizations. Mm. Otherwise, they would not have bounced back in uh, 10 days time. If the processes were very elementary or very you know rigid in nature, they would not have bounced back by 10 days. So my thought is that it, they should have, should have been, they should be having documented processes. Also having, uh, you know, uh, uh, I mean, they were able to spend the money, the resources, and you know, scaled up the systems in just ten days' time, which was uh, a very abnormal situation in a not, you know, a general cyber security, you know, cyber attack scenario. But uh, I think they were able to do that. Means they are definitely in an advanced organization as far as process is concerned. Okay. Anybody else? No, I would also maintain the same. Business. They are more towards an advanced organization. Okay. I believe they are in a progressing organization. Uh, why, I haven't, would you, yeah, why would you say I that? I haven't actually go, I have just gone quickly through the uh, document, but I believe uh, uh, a company with this size, with this interface to the world, with this um, uh, market share, global market share, uh, should, ha should have taken um, uh, independent uh, controls. Uh, independent from the CIO and uh, the umbrella beneath. Uh, I believe they were in the progressing organization. Okay, thank you, Mr. Khalid. Yeah. Uh, anybody else? Dr. Pradeep? Yeah. Uh, sorry. Dr. Um, I, I, sorry. I, I tend to agree with the first gentleman. I think you know they do have their advanced organization in terms of their processes, but they were not following through in terms of their execution in some ways. Uh, there was a little gap between management and line functions, but the processes were there. Otherwise, they wouldn't have been able to bounce back. So in terms of implementation, they were lagging, though they had the blueprint. Yes. Okay, we move on. If you look at the... Technology piece, where were they? I think they're in the middle, no? Okay. Why would you say so? They had, they, they had planned some sort of a backup now for the domain controller. Okay. They were able to recover within 10 days. That is not possible if they are basic organization. Okay. Uh, 
recovering 10 days proves that they are uh, at least in the progressing organizations thing okay they are not advanced uh, in terms of security maybe general it they maybe they are advanced but in terms of security they are not advanced cuz they made basic uh, i mean elementary mistakes exactly hmm. so exactly. we put it at the middle one progressing organizations exactly exactly anybody else thank you thank you mr sudarshan anybody else yes. i think uh, I, uh, professor the, they should be falling between basic and progressing because uh, one of the biggest uh, problems they faced was they were having 150 domain controllers which is uh, which was not integrated with each other which is a very basic you know uh, requirement of uh, uh, you know uh, it governance and in that scenario uh, if they would have uh, had the connectivity between all the domain controllers the replication metho methodology or the Uh, or the uh, the prevention would have been much better so in my sense uh, at least in terms of security and governance they were into uh, a kind of a basic scenario maybe the applications on the other things they were having 2000 applications obviously the application maturity would have been a different level but security and governance they were definitely not uh, at par with the the global requirements and i will put them at basic maybe basic to progressing something in the, in the middle okay okay thank you thank you i think i think um, there is a slight misinterpretation the domain controllers each one worked as a backup for the other 149 so they did have the backup so that is the reason i put it in the middle no progressing they are more towards progressing okay more towards progressing yeah yeah more towards progressing. okay anybody else i mean they had actually planned quite well i mean they had a backup every 4 days if you look at it they had 150 backups but i think somewhere they missed out on a few simple things and that's why they were attacked i mean they never thought that one of them had to be offline i mean i mean they had their processes in place they thought it was pretty good and but somewhere you know from the board level to the line level um the seriousness of cyber security was probably not transmitted exactly 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 to anybody me, else yes to me it's more towards the basic because i think when we talk about adoption of tools for incident detection and security analysis they did not update any of the patches that were uh, there for the security so that's a basic failure you know if you if you see from a technology point of view uh, so i would say that it would be more in the basic organization that they were not able to prevent yes because the, i mean a very simple thing like a security patch update if it is not done uh, for for uh, to avoid downtime i think uh, that's a serious security lapse there yeah, because i think the uh, the bonus or the incentive structure uh, probably was not aligned with uh, the requirements of security it was more aligned with uptime they wanted uptime chips coming going um, uh, it was not aligned the, the incentive structure okay. okay anybody else no i am also viewing them with the basic category only uh, professor ragna because in considering yes. their uh, uh, volume of business and the criticality and you know the type of fan world the presence etc even certain uh, advanced measures preventive measures i think they are not taken right uh, so right. that's why you know they could able to uh, i think they got attacked actually so exactly. still i am seeing them in the basic level only exactly so if you were to summarize uh, looking at all these different dimensions what do you think is one of the most critical aspects of focusing on how do you prevent these attacks what are some of the critical i would say uh, tent poles on which you have to overlay the whole thing what is my that? views uh, i am ravindran here frequent yes. audits actually is needed because honestly i not went through the full case study 
but i'm just giving a thing no i think uh, a frequent audit something like even vapt etc they were got done actually uh, I, i'm just honestly again i'm repeating i have not went through the full case study but a uh, company of that size and to know that criticality uh, they should have seen the outsider perspective even ethical lacking some of our uh, i think some of my colleagues they did mention earlier they had all tried it so that uh, the prevention is that uh, best way uh, is the thing needed critically right so i yeah for sure uh is was your question what is the critical factor for the problem or for for the recovery if no, it's for the the, the point yeah. is that if you really want to address in a holistic manner this entire phenomenon of being prepared what does it entail at the board level what does it entail at the ceo level what does it entail at the ceo level what does it entail i mean how do you pull all of this together that's a question Uh, that that's a traditional model now grc we need governance we need risk management we also need compliance if you follow the grc model definitely it will address all these issues correct so uh, so the point in this is that since we are all at a level where we can really make change happen this complex change always requires a very clear vision a very clear set of skills a very comprehensive plan in terms of incentives dovetail to the resources required and then that leads to an action plan so the way you are trying to see the anomalies in the formulation and the implementation at marks in terms of were they at at a, at a basic basic stage were they at a transitional or they were at advanced stage you know we were always debating why were they all over the place and that has something to do with this alignment that is required and being at the senior most levels if we are having a very integrated approach then we are able to really make a difference that is worthwhile for the organization and that i think is what i would say comes as a foremost responsibility for all of us who are so senior to see this integration happen so that the orientation just doesn't remain basic the orientation does just doesn't remain at a transitional phase but goes all the way to the advanced stage where you see that this is part of the culture of the organization thank you very much i have exceeded my time by 5 minutes uh, pardon my my excess in terms of uh, this deliberations uh, uh, we will say that uh, we will have about 10 minutes of break before we get on to the next session is that okay yes thanks thank you thank you, yeah. thank you professor wonderful session professor thank you so much